I won't fail you. I'm not afraid. You will be. You will be. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Contingency Plan Podcast. My name is Jedi Master David, and with me, as always, is Darth Austin. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our all Jedi Fallen Order podcast, E3. Woo! Woo. <clears throat> force powers. <laughs> well, we're a, certainly... Kind of a weird... Like, the way they do force powers in that game is pretty weird. Well, we'll, we'll definitely get into that here in our Holonet section, but, uh, but of course, as always, we are actually a reread podcast. Still going through the New Jedi Order Dark Tide 1 Onslaught. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the book, and we're just doing some bulk chapters still. Uh, and then we'll be getting into a whole bunch of new and exciting things as we go along. But first, Jedi Council, how you been doing? Work. That's literally all I got to say for this week. Crappy week for work. Just long week. What about yeah. you? Yeah, well, yeah, definitely, definitely work. A lot of uh, a lot of problems at work and um you know, had a had a backpacking trip uh, this past weekend, which was mostly okay. Uh then yeah, work, work, been training people, which has been something so, yeah, looking forward to the weekend and looking forward to some stuff next week, which we'll talk about as well. Oh, yeah. One one positive note for the week. We went camping in the camper for the first time. Yeah, there you the go. Weekend. Yeah, you also you also went camping this week, too. Yeah, just glamping. Well, glamping, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, still, it's better to better to get out and, uh, and away sometimes than just sitting at home and... Playing know, Xbox. Whatever you... Uh, I don't really do much you guys anymore. do. <laughs> stuff. Well, I'll tell Nothing you Nothing seems very important, just a lot of time-consuming stuff right X, now. X, Xbox, man. I uh, haven't touched my Xbox in probably a solid month. It, like, sat down and played. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, don't really, I don't really play video games much anymore. I mean, I pretty much use my PS4 to watch movies sometimes. I thought you were going to say something else. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what possibly you would have thought I would have going to say, but, uh, you know, anyway... <laughs> Well, okay, big Holonet series. So let's go into this. So let me let me start by saying this, man. Yeah, we talked about game systems. Oculus Quest came out here recently. Have mm-hmm. you heard of the Oculus Quest? No, and I didn't watch E3 yet because, again, useless stuff taking up my time. Haven't been able to. <laughs> I actually have watched quite a bit of E3, but let me let me talk about Oculus Quest. So Oculus Rift was the first one. It was you know mm-hmm. PC based VR headset, yeah. little nunchucky type thing. Skyrim. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, sure. <laughs> So the Quest is its own system. You don't have to have a computer for it. Uh-huh. And uh, a friend of mine uh, from Clashing Sabers, Lindsay, actually, she, she texted me. She's like, I got the Oculus Quest. Super cool. <laughs> because Vader Immortal mm-hmm. is on that, and she said it was super dope, and I've considered getting one, but my God, they're $400. How heavy is that? I don't know. I, I mean, I think it's probably manageable, but think about that. You literally have like a, a big goggle over your eyes and you're moving and you're going to be sweaty. Yeah. You're going to be, you're going to be, you need like a face condom or something like that. What was that <laughs> Genesis console thing that, um, the, oh, the real thing. old one? Yeah. Oh, the, like the was first, Dream Gear the first or like VR that? thing. I don't remember what it was called, but yeah, that was the one that gave people like schizophrenia and uh-huh. well, not really, but I mean, it gave people bad migraines, really screwed yeah. with their vision. Just remember it was like a terrible shade of red. And yeah, my, uh, I had a buddy who actually had one back really? when we were kids. Uh, yeah, his, his dad was just one of those guys who, you know, got him. They didn't, they didn't have a bunch, but he always had all the newest game systems because that's what he was into. And, uh, yeah, I just remember he got that and we played it. I was like, well, this is kind of stupid to be honest with you. I didn't really care for it, 
But yeah, I, I'm very interested in it because uh, some of the the augmented reality VR stuff is really cool. There's a lot of really neat VR games uh, out right now that I've watched gameplay on Gorn, um, Drunken Bar Fight, some, <laughs> some of these like fighting type games. Yeah. I remember watching a video of some. Uh, well, it was the Djibouti Dubs guys on on Twitch. They played Gorn for the first time, and it had been like a year or so ago. And I just remember laughing my head off watching <laughs> them play this game and Drunken Bar Fight. And I mean, there, there's a there's a ton of other VR stuff now, and it's, it really has grown into its own thing. When originally I thought it was going to die because mm-hmm. you had like you had your PlayStation VR and yeah. Xbox had something too, right? I don't remember what that one was called, or did they? No, they had the Connect, but they never had anything after that. Okay, yeah. But anyway, uh, oh. Uh, I'm, I'm, but PC, I mean, Xbox, wow, I'm, Microsoft, I'm totally blanking on another now. one because there was another one. I mean, there's Oculus, there's PC, v, uh, the PlayStation VR, and then there was another big one. Anyway, oh, Vive, the Vive, that's what I was thinking about. So, yeah, anyway, even I, what games were on the Vive? I'd, well, I mean, they all had their own thing. You <laughs> yeah. could like connect to Steam oh, and, and get okay. stuff. So, oh, super hot. There's another one that was pretty cool. It's like a, like a, all the people, it's like a shooter, but everything's mm-hmm. like glass. Like they're, you know, they're like glass guys and like they oh. blow up into particles and stuff. It's, cool. Anyway, a lot of cool games. So I've been thinking about that. I've still obviously been thinking about a Switch. I know we kind of have talked yeah. about that too. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of cool Switch games, man. And another E3, not Star Wars related, but they have, um, they released that they are going to be making a sequel to Breath of the Wild. Ooh. Which they never make sequels to yeah, Zelda they don't. games. That's kind of strange. But this is going to be a sequel to Breath of the Wild, which cool. was hugely popular. Cool. Yeah, I still have bigly even, popular. I haven't even played the. Yeah, See, I haven't like either demoed yet. it or. Anything. I mean, I don't, I don't have a Switch, right? Uh, but I've I've considered it, and I've been thinking a lot about it. Uh, but I, I just don't know how much I would actually play it. But I just like that it's portable as well. My thing is like, is the console going to last long enough for me to invest now? Because we've already gotten a few years into it. Well, so. see, the the thing that I'm wondering is eventually they're gonna they're gonna come out with another one. Yeah. And I feel like once that happens, I'll just get the old one. Like when it's super right. cheap, <laughs> oh. hundred fifty bucks. You know, yeah. come on, man. Right. There's plenty of games to keep me entertained. I don't need lot. to upgrade right away. Right. Well, there's a lot of games for Nintendo now, and they did have a big E3, but let's talk about the biggest E3 thing for me, and that was Jedi Fallen Order. Yep. Uh, they had gameplay. Gameplay. Uh, and a lot of it, 13-minute video. Yeah, it was... It was. Uh, I, I watched it live. I was super hype about it. Oh, no, you know what? I didn't get to watch that one live. I'm lying already. No, I was actually out in the woods when oh, they really? when they uh, showed that, so I had to watch it the next day. That's what happened. Was that Saturday when that one aired? I believe so, yeah, and, and I was still out. I didn't get back until, like, Sunday night. Uh, so anyway, oh, man... So let, let's let's talk about let's talk a little bit about the gameplay we saw. So our our heroes on a mission, right? Mm-hmm. We see Saul Guerrero. He's a little bit less uh, less dead mm-hmm. than yeah. <laughs> he was in Rogue <laughs> One. He still had some uh, some pieces there, yeah. um, but you know our hero he does have his lightsaber. We've got the little droid. Um, yeah, what do you think of the droid? I love the. Little I actually droid. love the, the droid now. There, I think there was he's, little, he's got like his hacker thing in his foot. I know it's so cool. I, there was a moment I got excited. I thought we were going to be able to control the droid. I think he's like th- he's crouching yeah, under something. Yeah, he was going kinda, through that tunnel. The, the, the point the, yeah, is yeah, on yeah. the droid. It's like oh crap. Yeah, you actually you like, actually oh. have have it up a little bit yeah. here. That's that's a. Oop, I don't mean to. Now we're just going to blare the audio uh, for all the audio. Turn it down. I, I accidentally touched something on your phone. Sorry, bud. So. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. here in the beginning, he's meeting up with Saul. And first and foremost, what do you think of the, the, the caricature of this hero? Does he look a little... Young. <laughs> well, not young, but maybe like he's kind of got a pretty big, like, protruding chin, you know. He's like, he's not weird looking, but he's yeah. just, you know, he's a little, little... Off. Maybe he needs a beard. He but could he, use a beard. <laughs> No, he hasn't not. gone through enough in the game yet. He'll probably get beard at beard? the end of the game. Yeah, I, th- I think he. I think he'd have a beard. Th- this droid is super cool, though. Do you know the name of the droid? Because I didn't. Hear I can't remember about the that. darn name of the droid. Yeah. Um, super so, cool let, droid. Here, uh, skip ahead a little bit, and l- let's let's do some combat. We're kind of watching as as we're talking here. By the way, the, the audience can't see it, but when he gives that look, the the big chin look, it's just yeah. It's crazy. And they also got in Forrest Whitaker's eye too. Did you yeah, I noticed that. that. 
<laughs> At first, I didn't recognize the character. Then I saw the eye. It's like, hey. For, Forrest Whitaker, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so let, let's talk a wee bit about combat here. So If it loads. Well, it, we can talk either way. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is that, so for more, most of the normal stu- stormtroopers, it's basically one-shot kill, yeah. right? Which makes sense to me. Right. I kind of like that. They're not going to block it, so, <laughs> and they're not going to take care of that, or take that kind of damage. Right. So. Uh, but they did show a, a battle with the, um, with the purge troopers, mm-hmm. and those were pretty cool battles. They, they, they take a few more hits. Yeah, you're... <laughs> Did you connect to the Wi-Fi when you came in? No, new phone, and I don't have your password. You want to say that in front of all the yeah? Let me go ahead and give you that my (laughs) my social security uh, number. I'll I'll try equally important. I'll I'll, yeah, (laughs) I'll I'll pull up the it it on my phone, and we can we we can kind of uh, go through some of the combat. But anyway, um, let's see. Let's set it up there. Go away, screen. Okay. So first and foremost, one of the one of the weird things. in the very beginning, you notice when he runs, they kind of do that like fast sort of run and then that sort of slow stop. Yeah. So it's not a stop on a dime. Yeah. Like um, GTA games. Yes. That's what, it, yeah, <laughs> the, you're exactly. The stop that gets you killed when you fall off a ledge because it, you keep walking. Exactly <laughs> right. So I, I'm a little bit concerned about that, if, if truth be told. Um, but, you know, it looks like, you know, there's a little bit of, uh, I don't, it's not Hardcore. really an element of, of puzzle, but yeah. Some of the like he was wall strafing, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like reminiscent of what like like the Nathan Drake series. Of, yep. What is that? Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't remember the name of the the actual Uncharted. Uncharted, <laughs> and, and maybe a little Prince of Persia in here. Yeah. Th- yeah. There's Assassin's there, Creed ish. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. Assassin's Creed maybe is more what I mean than Prince of Persia. Hell, if they made a Prince of Persia game in like years, I don't know. Uh, Two thousand. 12 or 13, I think. Yeah, maybe. Okay. okay. So, you know, we have, we have some climbing. We have some strafing. Now, some of the force powers are interesting. So right here, he's actually, there's a fan, and he kind of just stops it. Yeah. And then there's, there's other parts. There was actually a really cool cinematic where he was, um, he was in the hallway, a trooper's shooting blast. He slows down the bolt. He brings the trooper towards him, and then he throws the trooper in front of the bolt as it zips past. Yeah. So it's like kind of like a little... Uh, He's, Lower he's tier bad. Kylo Ren type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I like I like uh, I like his lightsaber his lightsaber combat. You know, we have some of the the lightsaber deflects like the old games used to yep. have the the throw the saber throw. And it seems like you have a stamina bar for your force powers as well, which is good. Yeah, you just spam the throw. Right, <laughs> and, and to be honest with you, it, it kind of looks like there's a bit of a parry system. Like you can you can pull off some move off a of parry off of parries, which is kind of reminiscent of Sekiro, the new Sekiro game. Mm. Um, By the I don't, way, this guy sucks at fighting these bugs. Did you well, that? <laughs> I feel like what he's trying to show, I feel like he's trying to show different damage points, but mm. I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> but from a, from a tester, I feel like, you know, okay, so I'm walking away from it. He clearly knew that bug wasn't dead, so right. maybe he was trying to show the damage. And what was the thing he was getting ready to do? It was like a charge mm. attack of some kind. Kind of curious about that Yeah, when I, he got hit. Yeah, I'm interested to, to see. I mean, because we see some basic hack and slash attacks, and then there's some, like, some God of War... Uh, uh, death blows and yeah. stuff like that. So, and the pacing is very different than Force Unleashed as well. Mm-hmm. Force mm-hmm. Unleashed was very fast paced with a ton of enemies. Seems like this is more strategy driven. I, I would say so. And I gotta say, like you know, aside from a few things, I think this world looks really neat. Yeah. Uh, the 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 construction of it looks looks pretty cool. I think. Um, I don't know, man. I'm I'm so excited. I'm super excited about this, yeah. and this drops in November. So this drops around my birthday, along with several things. November is going to be a huge month for yeah, me. A lot of books too. So I'm going to all my money's gone in November because <laughs> I'm buying this no matter what. I thought this was kind of funny. So he's fighting this gigantic spider and basically like goes chew his head off. Yeah, he's okay. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> he's cool. Uh, I, that lightsaber is so sweet, though. Yeah, and I really, I really think they focused on the most important thing with combat honestly that's that's what we don't get from any star wars game anymore yeah. it's always blaster fire it's all that well, i didn't really like the new battlefronts as far as uh I, yeah, lightsaber I combat went with the heroes so understandable it was yeah it was it was definitely different but remember I, how clunky the original battlefronts were though and how much we loved it oh, like, yeah like, yeah like the terrible lightsaber combat with like obi-wan and everyone but yep. it was still amazing yep it was like one attack just 
spammed a million times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. I'm going to just hop ahead. And we'll, we'll you know get... one that I actually really liked, I wish they would do uh, a remake on, was the Revenge of the Sith movie tie-in game. I could see that. That was yeah. actually a very good game. Yeah. RPG elements. And... Well, there are a couple things that uh, that we'll, we'll talk about past this, but okay, so... And the lightsaber damage on the trooper armor is really nice. Yeah, it is really cool. I like cool. that effect. So, scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you for this game to drop? Solid 10. Solid 10. Same here. Uh, I I don't know what else there is to say. It yeah. looks flipping awesome, and I'm super excited to see it. <clears throat> so, another another thing that I, I read, uh, pulled an article of earlier, I, I kind of forgot this. So, apparently, we're going to get a couple of... <sighs> They call them limited runs here, but basically they're not going to upscale these, but they're going to be able to drop them for newer platforms. And I want you to kind of look, take a look at this list here of games. Cause like one of the ones that pops out star Wars episode one racers, uh, star Wars Jedi Knight, Jedi Knight two, uh, Jedi Academy, which is what I'm kind of most excited about, uh, and then Tie Fighter and X Wing. Those were those were interesting back in the day, but so apparently we're, we're going to get a couple of titles here as sort of like re releases, but for modern systems, but with the same graphics as the old games. Cool. So that should be kind of interesting as well. So kind of like the uh, I don't know if PlayStation did, but there's on Xbox they have like. Uh, it's Red Dead Redemption, mm-hmm. but it's in an Xbox One case. Yes, yeah. But it says something along the lines of works with Xbox One, but it's essentially just a 360 game. Correct. Re- yeah. Cased. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if these are actually going to be released in like disc format. I feel like it's digital. more going to be like digital. But yeah. so we'll see about that. That should be interesting. That's pretty early on, but uh, but the games, the games, the games. Mm-hmm. Give me the games. Give yep. me the good games. Um, you know, we've been suffering uh, with lack of good Star Wars games. And I, I, like I said, Fallen Order looks badass. And I think, I think it's going to be great. And I think it replaces, uh, was it 1313 was the, the bounty hunter one that we were promised, but they canceled mm-hmm. it when Disney took over. Yeah. So I think that'll replace it. I think it should be fun. Should be fun. So what now else this, do we, this one, isn't technically a Disney licensed game though, right? This is independent in a way. They got permission, but it's not through so, Disney so this, Studios. So this, this is Respawn. Okay. Uh, it's EA. Okay. And and, and Respawn is okay. is uh, is making making the game. But yeah, gotcha. I mean, this is canon. Yeah. So it is like Disney. It would have to be Disney okayed. So we might be getting a book for it too, which is maybe that'd be cool. Maybe maybe maybe. Uh, okay. So I think we're all out of news, right? There's no more news to talk about. No, and I, even if there was, oh, I'd you know what? I have it. some news. <laughs> Alphabet Alphabet Squadron just came out. Oh yeah, <laughs> I actually we have, have all the news in one week, <laughs> and then it's dry for like a month. I That's did, always did how it goes. Yeah. So Alphabet Squadron Alexander Freed uh, just came out. I have the physical book here. I haven't started. I literally just got it today. Um, I'm excited to to read about it. Uh, he was at the publishing panel at Celebration, um, talking a little bit about it. So I'm I'm interested to see how this book pans out. Uh, but yeah, no more no more news, right? No more Star Wars news. Well, actually, no. <laughs> We're good on Star Wars news. Save There's, everything for th- next week. There is one more. Save it. There's one. There more. is another. There is another. <laughs> Star Wars Celebration 2020 just dropped the dates and the ticket dates. <clears throat> so Star Wars Celebration is going to be four days instead of five days. Rip off. No, I'm just kidding. But August 27th through the 30th, 2020 in Anaheim, California. Tickets go on sale uh, next week, yes, June thank, 21st. Thank you, everything Star Wars. <laughs> All the people from Star Wars that decided to give me one week's notice for that $200. There are <laughs> there are a lot of people complaining about yeah. that. Um for for last year's we ha- I don't remember how much time we had but it felt like a good amount of time Even that we like knew a month just give me a month yeah or a couple weeks something <laughs> one of the things that and, and I'll be honest with you I'm excited but there is one thing that I'm not super happy about um, so VIP tickets so this is four day event La- this year's was five um, the VIP tickets are the same price for one last day. 
Now you do get a commemorative tumbler in the package this oh, year on top of everything so else. Not so, getting you know, a full day of good, some tumblers and stuff. It's super cool. What about for us normies? <clears throat> is it the same price? It's a little cheaper. A little cheaper. It's it's yeah. a little cheaper. Um, so a, a four day adult pass is one hundred ninety five. Mm-hmm. Um, the five day I think was two twenty five or two fifty last year or the. Yeah, last last year because last year we bought our tickets for this year, <laughs> and uh, and obviously, so around the time of celebration next year, after spending all that money, you'll have to buy the tickets for the following year. It's great. Well, here's the thing: you got about two months, though, I, didn't you? In between, in between what? Or a month? You went last month, right? Yeah. Yep. Or no, was it April? April. 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 Yeah. So yeah, sorry, months passed me by. Um, I'm I. We were all surprised that. There was going to be a celebration this year. We kind of thought it would be every other year, mm-hmm. which makes a little bit of sen- a little bit more sense. Um, obviously, we're in Ohio, so the trek to California to Anaheim is going to be a little bit worse off than Chicago. Yeah, um, but you know, we'll make it. And we'll try and force you into it as well. And uh, you've been on a plane before. Yeah, I love yeah. flying. Yeah, we'll get the cheap. And rental cars are always nice. We'll get the cheapest, <laughs> cheapest flight around, be like a <laughs> propeller-driven <Yeah>. plane. <laughs> Do you remember Major League, the old uh, Cleveland Indians movie? from Yeah. yeah. Where, yeah. where they're like, they take away their fancy plane and they give them that piece of crap yeah. that they're literally duct-taping on the <laughs> runway. The Buddy Holly death plane. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, that'd be scary. So, oh man, yeah, we've got we've got a lot to look forward to, a lot to do, a lot to look at, a lot to read, a lot to see. Mm-hmm. And heck, there's even a movie this year. So. Yeah. Just so much Star Wars being thrown in our face. You know how the fans complain about too much Star Wars at once? Well, they completely doubled down on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with it. Definitely for sure. There's there's a ton going out. So, but anyway, that that actually is it for news. There was a lot of things dropping this week. Uh, and if you want to keep up with that, make sure to uh, to like our page on Facebook, just the Contingency Plan Podcast. You can also find us on all podcasting networks. And uh, and for Facebook, you know, tell us your Star Wars story. If you got a Star Wars story and want to hear it uh, read out on air, give you a little shout out, you know, send it to us on Facebook. Or if you got a little bit more of a long form, hit us up in the email, tcplanpodcast at gmail.com. Any questions, comments, or whatever, just send them to us. And also, uh, if you would, be so kind. Leave us an old uh, five star review on your, I don't know, iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave us some comments, pod bean it, negative comments on YouTube, right? That's right. Always. <laughs> and message me. I'm lonely. Man, you're a sad man. Facebook Messenger. Sad, 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 sad man. Uh, but uh, but also we have our Patreon too. If you feel like supporting the show, it's a good place to go. We have our Dinner with the Patron series over there. Just a little series where we sit down and eat some food and talk about random stuff, just a little extra content. Yep. But are you? Uh, and also a couple shout outs this week. I do want to give a shout out to a semi new podcast ran by a couple of buddies of mine, Mike and, or excuse me, Matt Nez. <laughs> Matt Nez, uh, Hyperspace Hangout. It's a cool, uh, cool little, you know, just random Star Wars show. Uh, I should be appearing on that. I'm sure you might get on there too once uh, everything sort of calms down with some of that stuff. But yeah, yeah. be sure to check them out. And ready to get in the reread? I is. I've got my notes for once. Yeah, we had. Well, we obviously have to take notes now because we're reading through many more chapters. We got seven on the docket today. Yep. And I forgot how to count, so I actually yeah, read we had an extra a chapter. Nice long argument about that. So yeah, we, <laughs> we were counting. We were like counting on fingers. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> so yeah, I. I I mathed wrong, yeah. which was funny. But anyway, I, I guess I'm a little bit more advanced for next week. Yeah. So, yeah, several pages of notes. We are going to hit chapter 23 through what? 29. 29. <laughs> Which is seven. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I bet if we look back, there's text for but who cares? That's okay. Yeah, it doesn't okay. matter. Okay, so chapter chapter 23. This was, uh, this was one of our shorter chapters, if I'm remembering correctly. Yep, back on old Dantooine. Yeah, well, everything's converging towards Dantooine yeah. very quick, but this is... Everybody uh, goes to hang out on Dantooine. Exactly. It's a place for the teenagers to go and stuff. Well, we've got some <laughs> stuff going on in one of these yeah. chapters. We'll get to it. So basically, just as, as sort of a little summary here, 
our uh, our Dantari here, our elder Dantari that befriended, uh, well, the befriending went some way or another. I guess it was more Anakin befriending it, or maybe I don't yeah. know. They haven't. He has a name now. Yeah, Tuber, Little or you want to call him Tuber? No, I like Tuber. Tuber. <laughs> So Mara is basically getting worse. Yeah. Um, she's, she's not doing so hot. And Jason is, ba- or Jason, my God, Anakin. Anakin is, uh, he's kind of enjoying this, not really using the force for everything. He's kind of going yeah. off and doing his thing. And he's like, you know what? I'll use the force later. Yeah. I'll just do me right now. It's like, you know what? It's peak hours. I'm going to turn the force off. Well, right you now. know, Mars using all the force, so there's not much left on the plan. It doesn't roll over, so <laughs> we got to wait so... for it to reset. Exactly. But uh, they are not alone. Uh, our friendly tuber winds up getting caught by some using Vong. Yeah. Uh, and the Vong kind of torture him, whip him with their amphistaffs. But before that, there's also a couple of important notes. Annie's becoming a chef. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you probably took more I detail took more notes goofy and, and some notes of these. No, I, hey, I'm glad. You, you need to, yeah. You, you bring in all the goofball stuff you want, because I, I just kind of tried to get major points. It'd be good. And also, as far as Mars disease goes, we noticed that, uh, and this will be explained upon more in the following chapters, but she's been having to draw more and more on the force. Correct. And has been getting worse to the point where Annie is actually, it's becoming difficult for him to sense her in the force because she's so enveloped by all the other beings. Exactly. So Tuber is being tortured and he's got, you remember he's got those buttons, those Imperial buttons. Yep. And Anakin kind of figures, it's like crap. (laughs) I bet he's getting tortured because of those buttons and they want to know where he Uh got him. Uh, so anyway, as this is happening, Anakin, uh, basically surprises using Vong, throws a big rock at him. Yep. And then he kills, kills three them. of them. <laughs> kills it, three of them. Jason it, can't even Was it even three handle. or was it two? I believe it's three on this. There's, well, there was later, there was fights. Three. It might be three, but after I, this. Yeah, yeah I thought this was two. Yeah, because I was like, okay. Yep, well, anyway, on. he, he did wind up finding kind of a. Kind of a, a weakness in their armor, too, like little gill section. Yeah, the living armor. Yeah. <laughs> so that was interesting. But, um, but he saves his little friend. And this is pretty impressive because you, you know how much, how much trouble Jason had with the Vong. Mm-hmm. Even Mara. Yep. But, you know, little, little Annie uh, pretty, makes pretty good. Now, granted, he, he does say, oh, well, you know, I kind of snuck up on him and threw a rock at him yeah. and then stabbed him to death. Isn't the gill in their armpit? Yeah, something like that. I yeah. thought so. Yeah. yeah. It's a great weak spot. Now, one other thing we learned. Oh, I, I wrote this down. And the Amphistaff hissed and slithered away. Yeah. <laughs> I like that part. It's great. The weapon just like, you know what? I'm going to start a new life. I'm just going to chase just rats new life and be somewhere. less aggressive. I'm not going to be a staff anymore. I'm a snake. I'm a sneaky snake. No more getting hard for me. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> So anyway, the last thing I wrote down here is that those roots that they were trading are actually have medicinal purposes. Yes, they help Mara out. Well, it helped helped uh, Anakin and Tuber out too yeah. because Tuber shows him uh, basically put it in your mouth, chew it, put a little bit of the paste in your wound, yeah. and actually as you're chewing it, it takes the pain away just by sucking on it. Yeah, it's Suck essentially a root. form of aloe vera. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just if does you're better. Eat it, just yeah, does a lot better. better. <laughs> so that so that was pretty cool. That's basically all I had for it's this Bacta. chapter. So it's Bacta. <laughs> it's cheap Bacta. <laughs> Black market Bacta. That's right. All right. So ready to move on to chapter twenty four? Yeah, let's talk about old Creefel's Leia. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. I think. Let's see. I did write down a couple of things here. Now, one, I actually have a quote to start this off. So Leia and Crefe are going to Dantooine now with their convoy and the refugees. Leia has this quote. If Tarkin had taken the bait, we wouldn't have this haven to run to. And did you forget about that? Because I totally did. I mean, I, I I remember the Dantooine, but I didn't really think about it until she said it here, uh, you know, because essentially there, there's a lot to Dantooine, and she basically just shoved it to Dantooine. She, you yeah. know, oh, they're, they're on Dantooine. Dantooine. They're on Dantooine. But... Tuber would have been, you know, he would have never been a thing. No, he would have been, he would have been dead. Up. So that no was... Vinca. 
<laughs> no Vinca. <laughs> exactly. So that was that was just kind of an interesting quote I had here. Uh, the next thing. Jada's <clears throat> growing up. Well, hold on. Vape, some skips. Yeah. First of all, I didn't know vape was was just a word well, we threw around know, cavalierly me, I, at this time. I just uh, you know pictured her being like, "We're gonna vape them," just like this vape pen. I'm her little right her now. little e cig. <laughs> God, it's my jewel. <laughs> but yeah. now it's hard for Leia watching her grow up and awkwardly talk about killing things. Y- yeah, well, I mean, you know, Jane is Jane is capable. Yeah. And she's she's involved now. She's she's in it. She's a pilot. She's in Rogue Squadron. S- sticks. <laughs> she's got a little nickname. Yeah, sticks. <laughs> she's got a bunch of sticks. I didn't quite ex- understand that nickname. It was just kind of stupid to me. Well, the she even the, is like well the no the, the X wing has a stick that you steer with, and she has a lightsaber, which also is like a stick, yeah. and it's at her side. So she has two sticks, which makes plural. You can't just call her stick. Because there are two sticks, which means sticks, uh, plural. <laughs> you know, just you explaining to that to me makes me realize how much effort they had to put into something so stupid. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Uh, so anyway, another thing I wrote down here, when they finally got to Dantooine, Leia could not feel Mara or Anakin. Mm-hmm. And then she does say, Jana, can you feel them? And she says, a little bit. Yeah. They're here, but me. Yeah. But, you know, again, like, <sighs> Leia's force sensitivity does get kind of thrown by the wayside a bit. So mm-hmm. she is force sensitive, but... Well, yeah, she can fly through space. <clears throat> Not in this universe. <laughs> Not right now, at least. But, you know, again, she's not a Jedi. Yeah. So some of this stuff kind of escaped. But she tries... Um, and then we kind of switch viewpoints to Mara and Anakin running from the Usen Vol. And they have been running for three days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've been they've been running Literally and gunning non-stop. for a while. Yeah. Um and and there's another little thing, like Anakin has been reducing himself in the force, basically. So yeah. he's been he's been not tapping into that force because he actually is wondering, are they somehow I know they're not in the force, but could they be tracking us using yeah. it? Now, there's some other stuff about that a little later, but it's an interesting thing to point out. But eventually, they have to face the Yuzen Vong. Yeah. And little Annie becomes a badass. Uh, he, he absolute Snap badass. Snap kick to the face. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, he, that is one of my notes. Little Annie yeah. snap kick to the face. Well, Mara is basically in no position or to, to fight. Yeah, she's hot. She's hiding in a tree. Yeah. He, t- he tells her to, to go, to run, yeah. and I'll take him on. Yep. And the interesting thing here is, and I wanted to point this out, so we can't feel the Yuzen Vong in the force, but all of a sudden, Anakin could... F- he knew exactly what he had to do to allow Mara to, to escape. Yeah. There was no doubt the force showed him the way despite he him not being able to feel them in the force. His path was made clear by the force, though. But they how does the how does his path be made clear if he can't feel them in the force? Or, more importantly, how does the force understand this danger if it can't commune with I know. the Yusin Vong? And this, this is kind of like one of those little things, kind of weird, but... Like, is it a plot hole in the writing, or is it... Well, foreshadowing for events. We'll just have to oh, see. Dang. So anyway, he Someone's killed. read the book, but won't spoil it for him. Nope, won't do it. <laughs> so Anakin kills one of them, incapacitates the other, and then uh, just as he, he actually ca- he catches an amphistaff a few times during this whole thing. Yeah, almost gets bit. And, you know, but he does times. catch one of the wrist, his yeah. saber wrist. Yeah. Uh, no, he actually gets stomped. Oh, was it stomped? Like one of them like jumps and lands on his wrist. Okay. <laughs> he drops his saber. Yeah. And right as Yuzen Vong is getting ready to potentially deal the death blow, in comes Master Luke. 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 Go to Dent. I mean Dagobah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was interesting. So, you know, Luke basically does his thing. Him and Jason show up at the right time. And uh Don't don't you think that's funny, by the way? They're like they're in a clearing. Last time we heard from Luke, he was on a different planet, but he's just 
you know, he runs right up to him, blocks that, and none of them notice it. Well, them here's yeah, attention. here's the thing. So Luke actually had a vision. Mm-hmm. He knew where to find them because he had a vision during but, his four snaps. But he said it didn't. His vision didn't have a happy ending. Yeah. But as we know, the future is always changing, or so they say. Unless you're except Jay- for except for when it doesn't. <laughs> Unless you're Jason, and then it just lies to you. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna free all the slaves, Jason. Go do it. Do it. Do, do it. it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Oh, by the way, did I did I mention I was lying? <laughs> Chapter twenty five. Yeah. Did you have notes on chapter twenty five? Let's see. If you got anything funny in there? Anakin's namesake. Talking about that with Leia. Yeah, so was so, so Elagos, the um the, the Kamasi senator. The came fields along. race person. <laughs> yeah. Th- so here's the thing. This guy turns into a badass for me. Mm-hmm. So he and Leia talk a little bit about, about Anakin, and he sort of starts to say, do you think that he, you know, Anakin, because Anakin and them are back now, and he's like, do you think that Anakin could potentially turn into his namesake? And she seems a little bit more conflicted here, but she does give the reason why she gave him her, the the name. And it was because basically putting innocence behind the name back, putting innocence back potential of what her father could have been essentially. Well, and and even in in a manner of speaking, what he was, he was a sweet little kid. This is pod racing. (laughs) He's just a little pod racer, pod racing around with the angels. I killed them. (laughs) And then I killed them all. So, um, I get that, but then we get into Elagos's race. You know, they all share memories. We've talked about this before, but he's made a decision today. They're a pacifist race, but he says, you know what? Not so much even they're just a pacifist race. It actually deeply yeah. hurts them. Stays with them forever. Yeah. They feel that memory on a daily basis. You know, you imagine a person doing something like that. They're not always going to think about it. These people always think yeah. about it. But you know what? It. He basically said, if I, I don't care. <laughs> if I have to deal death today, man, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And so he's going to take a shuttle and just try and blast out they got turn using long ships. Yep. Which is, which is incredibly brave of him. You know, he's, he's basically saying, I'm going to go against this because I have to. Yep. I can't just sit and he's idly a, by. He's a senator. Yeah. That's pretty badass. Yeah. And let's see here. There is a little bit of a revelation Mara has about her disease. Yep. Good, Very yep. interesting. There's theories she's throwing out that potentially the Yuz and Vong are cutting her off from the Force. But there's also another revelation she has that when she's in the thick of it, you know, she's, doing what she, she does feels best, stronger. she's actually, it's revitalizing to her. She's actually mending her wounds. She's yep. also fighting the disease. She's feeling better after three days of running from the Yuzum Vong. She feels better than weeks on Dantooine doing nothing. Which, which is counterintuitive, but again, once we actually get to the realization of this disease, we'll yeah. understand it a little bit more. But yeah, that's an interesting um, revelation. But one last thing here, she wants to hear about the story of the Jedi Master with two blades. Yeah. <laughs> bow, chick, bow, bow. Not those kind of two blades. Get out of the chain. Out of the no, but seriously, I, it's like, now tell me about that Jedi Master with them two blades. Yeah. This is kind of cool. They actually bring that up a couple times. Oh, and another thing, we completely glossed over this in the beginning. Anakin is basically being lauded as a hero yeah. right now. Yep. Everybody hears about him defeating the Yuzus and Vong, and he's now... His kill count is higher than anyone's at this point. He's got yeah. five. Jason still has none. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that was Chapter 25. Anything else uh, you wanted to knock out of Chapter 25? No, nah, I didn't have a ton of notes from that. It was a fairly short chapter. 26 is a little better. So 26, I actually didn't have a ton of notes because I wanted to just jump in and kind of read some of it because this is where we actually get into the battle. And I thought it was written reasonably well. Mm-hmm. Or oh, wait, is yeah, this the battle 27 one? is the start of the... Dang yeah. damn it. Okay. Well, now, no, 27 is cringy Danny stuff. And then 28 is kind of some of the battle. Yeah, maybe I'm... Oh, okay. So no, I have little to no notes because 
You didn't like the chapter. 26 had nothing to talk about. Well, That's literally all I have. It was on. chapter 28 is what I'm thinking okay. about. So yeah. I'll just, I'll read my notes from 26 and then we'll skip 26 because I don't remember anything else. <laughs> so the missing students were taken by Vong. Yep. We know that. And... On my notes, I will not write use and Vong, so that's why I say it that way. Yeah, I usually I'm put not Vong, take Vong too. To put How do I spell use and yeah, I looked Vong. it up, or I had to go back once. But uh, yeah. So they think there are only two on the planet. Yep. Corrin knows the slaves won't survive, which yep. is kind of a heavy topic. He basically says, we got to leave them. They might infect other people. They're not going to come back from this. We felt the pain they're going yep. through. They're basically done. And they're, they're basically going to drop the kill scent, let the slash rats take care of them. Yeah. Their bomb thing. You know, because they need to drop the kill scent to kill two using Vong on the planet. Darn straight. Yeah. And he also says that if the scientists have been turned that were captured, they're going to have to stay too. Yep. Now, only one other thing I wanted to point out. So Dr. Pace, in the beginning, she's like trying to sneak up on him. And he's like... <laughs> That's hey, the boots. Hey, hey, Dr. Pace. But he also says that she is a very strong presence in the force. Yeah, I thought that was a little interesting. So I thought that was kind of interesting, too. But yeah, she wears different boots. So that's the end I of I want those boots. silent fiber <laughs> boot things. Yeah, the rest you know, of your... They're so right, silent that even a Jedi can't hear the you. The rest apparently. of your people are a lot quieter than you trumping around. Yeah. And uh, old what's-his-name hanging out with... Or going with corn is... Uh, Having a fight with his girlfriend, I think that was in the yeah. The, his the girl he's literally known for a few days. Yeah, but they're in love or yeah, something else. About chicken pie. Chapter twenty seven. Finally, an epic space battle. Nope, nope, nope. not yet, Never not mind. yet. Just but tiny. we do have sort of the the ramp up here. Um, but the Vong have beetleborgs. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny when they uh, when, when they were drawing up their plans. They used a beetle, and he's like, "Well, we don't really know what they have, so I'm just going to use this beetle, beetle with a billion legs." <laughs> it was pretty cool. But they do have new squadrons. They have the Savage Squad, which is made up of quote uglies that had shields. Yeah. Uh, tough squadron, super Which is imaginative. Not tough. Yeah, really. Less <laughs> powerful ships armed with ion cannons or have no shields. Yeah. And then we got the ones that are just cobbled together. They're like yeah. they're gonna have high, heavy casualties because their ships are just falling apart. Yeah, that's great. <sighs> yeah. So Gavin does do a little bit of a speech here, yeah. basically like you know we're all probably gonna die. Yeah. But we but have hey, to do. We it. gotta do it. Because no one else will. Exactly. And Jaina has her little like moment where she's like, hey, you know, I like your plan, but my plan's better. You know? Well, here, here's, here's the thing. She actually comes up with a way to use Yuzen Vong, Davin Basils, or gravity, their gravity fields against them. Yep. She's smart. Yep. And so essentially and she throws she's, out some super science terms during yeah. that too, which I didn't write down, so I'm not going to remember them. Right. <laughs> well, basically what she says is that let's reprogram our missiles, yeah. and they will target. They will feed directly from the targeting in the ships. We'll detonate them prematurely, prematurely when we sense the, grav, the gravimetric anomaly. So it's not really getting sucked up in so all the energy it detonates prematurely all the energies you know going out explode it absorbs oh, what they me. can but they can't it absorbs absorb a it little all. bit but because it's still not absorbed we can take out ground troops yep so that was i mean that's that's interesting that's an interesting way this is now her second idea to circumvent using vong technology yep so that's huge now let's talk about your Most favorite part, important part of this Very book. Favorite part, the romance, the friend zone, the friend zone. So yeah, Jason, uh, he's uh, I'm very he's, nice, especially when I'm around friends. He's uh, <laughs> picking at the scab on his face, and Dan says, "Yeah, don't don't pick at that. You'll get a scar." It's like, well, you know, I mean, make me more handsome. He's like, "Well, you're already pretty handsome, big boy." Yeah. Do, do girls like scars? Is that the, <laughs> the thing that's in now with the ladies? <sighs> Yeah, but, you know, so they do have a little conversation. Obviously, they're flirty, and, yeah. you know, she does say she straight, straight out. Says, I have feelings for you. I have feelings but for everything's you. everything's all kind of muddled right Basically, now. I'm attracted to you, but she's having a hard time because, like, all of a sudden, she's now just, like, this super sensey force user, and she senses everything. She's trying to control herself. She's trying to block out other people. She's trying to keep her stuff in, and... 
she does make mention. It's like, you know, if you were like a little older enough, maybe I were like a little younger. And maybe if like, you know, this happened and that happened. And maybe if we were like back home and I was just getting married and having babies. So it it kind of. I love that part. It's like there could have been a a path I could have taken where I had. I got married and I had babies. Yep. Well, do you still want to do that? Are you with anyone? Do you want to do that now? I mean, we're in the middle of war, but hey, whatever. Thinking with his other head. By the way, I didn't put it in as a note, but during all these battles, why is it such a common thing for every Jedi to hit the Yuzen Vong in the head with the butt of their lightsaber instead of just killing them? Because it's a cool thing to do. No. Concussions. They're going to wake up. And then what happens? Concussions. So anyway... Jason's been friend zoned, and even he keeps saying the word friend. Well, it's good to have a friend, friend like you, friend, friend Danny, friend McFriend. Yeah, friend. And then, let me get the last uh, line from that. By the way, I didn't write it down, but I thought it was so cringe worthy. Worthy. Well, the whole thing is terrible. cringy, but but yeah, they're kids. Oh crap! That was in the middle of it because it yeah, it's, it's views. But essentially, it was like. You're so nice. Like, well, I'm really nice when friends are around. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. I'm super great when friends are around. So yeah. thanks, friend. Which is why, you know, I got almost killed by that using phone because I didn't have any friends around. Yep. Yeah. Maybe we should go back to that long, you know, slender ship with our <laughs> makeshift clothes on. It'll be yeah. great, man. Anyway, I did want to end this chapter, though, uh, by essentially the conversation that Luke has with Anakin. Yeah. And so he's very proud of him. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's you know thanking him. He's basically saying, you know, you did a great job. But he says that during my vision, when I was looking out for you guys, you blazed so bright in the force, he knew that no Yuzen Vong could defeat him. Yeah, he was untouchable. Yeah. That's pretty... <laughs> That's probably some foreshadowing. It's not only high important. it's not only high praise, but it's just it's really, really cool for for Uncle Luke, who's basically just this mythical being yeah. to say that you burned so bright that I knew no one could touch you. And that's actually another thing Jason admits finally. He was finally impressed with his uncle. Damn. He'd heard all the stories about yeah. all the things Luke had done before he was even born, but now he saw it. Yeah. Again, the two the the Jedi mask with two sabers. Didn't you love the way he put it? It's like, well, I did accept him as master, but I really didn't. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, shut I, up, I mean, Jason. I didn't really think he was that great, but now I know he's super cool. So he's like, cool, cool, Uncle Luke. And you know, I know they weren't in the same chapter, but you know, you first get the reference to Anakin and his namesake, and then you get this how he shine so bright in the forest kind of makes you wonder if he's going to end up being the strongest of the three. And that, well, we've already kind of seen his, his strength with the, with the connection uh, when they yeah, were all piloting. The bond. So there's something, I mean, there's something special about all three of them, but right now, I mean, he's kind of, he's kind of leading some of the cool packs. What's here. special about Jason? What's special about Jason? His special friend zone powers. <laughs> I can friend zone any lady I want. <laughs> oh wait, I mean myself. <laughs> anyway, let's let's wrap that up. Let's head in chapter twenty eight. This was the one I wrote like a couple lines, but I think we'll just um, we'll just kind of jump in now. We do figure out here very early that there are two squadrons of coral skippers uh, at first. And hey, let's just read some of this. This is a yeah. eh, it's not a super duper long chapter, but it does bounce around point of views a little bit. So anyway, night had fallen thick and hard before the force first warning was sounded. The troopers Admiral Crefe had set down to help out with the situation, had set up remote sensor pods that picked up the infrared energy the Yuzen Vong gave off. Kill. Once the first alarm came through, two tie wings from Tough Squadron, I'm tough, tough, went out for quick recon of the area where the sensors had reported movement. Uh, Gavin, and, Gavin had watched the tie wings take off and head south. They became distant pinpoints of light to the naked eye. But situated in his cockpit, he was able to follow them on his primary monitor. 
He listened to their calm chatter and heard one pilot's voice strain as he saw a long column, column of use and Vong <laughs> coming in. Out there, five to six kilometer distance, reddish ground fire reached up towards the fighters. They were able to avoid it fairly easily and still managed to report back what they saw. Multiple contacts command ground troops on foot, as well as two large vessels and 12 smaller ones. Gravitic anomalies and plasma cannons on the big ones. Plasma cannons on the smaller ones. Plasma cannons on the people on the ground. Plasma cannons everywhere. Plasma cannons on the ants that are crawling up Gavin. (laughs) (laughs) Or not Gavin, what's his name? (laughs) Ganner. Ganner. Air contacts coming on now. We're We're scooting. We're scooting. Scooting along in my tie wing, boss. Uh, Gavin hit a button. He hit the X button for PlayStation users, right. by the way. He hit the, he hit the triggers. It's not a button anymore. He, has to, he, hit, he hit the right and left triggers on his comm unit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the triggers that are better than the other triggers yeah, yeah. by you, dark side. Yeah. The Xbox sucks. <laughs> it's a crappy system. Yeah, it's it not is. that bad. Uh, <laughs> this is Rogue Leader to all rogues. Light them up. The enemy is out there, and we're going to pulverize them. He keyed in his ignition sequence and waited for his power and weapon systems to go green. Catch, monitor base tactical frequencies, and flash the button when there is an emergency. Warble. Hey, warbles. Uh, let's see here. Well, multiple clicks came over the comm channel to acknowledge uh, his commands. Uh, looks like they have two squadrons of skips up. I have to like the odds and just have to hope we can make the best of them. And they do. Yeah, I mean, they actually have a, a pretty decent uh, decent time with a couple of these uh, skips. Um, they take, they're able to take down a few here. I'm going to skip just a bit ahead because I kind of like the descriptiveness here. Ahead of Gavin, the sky lit up like the Coruscant cityscape during the celebration of Liberation Day. Plasma bo- bolts arced into the sky. Laser bolts, both green, both red and green, as well as blue ion bolts slanted down towards the ground. Flashes of color eliminated two huge shadowy shapes moving through the night, but Gavin could not make out much in the way of detail. He almost asked Catch to switch him over to ground attack mode on his sensor so he could get an idea of what the Yuzen Vong were bringing to, the assault, bringing to assault the base, but incoming fighters demanded his attention. And they'll get it. My undivided attention. Spitting attention. <laughs> I wonder if he had a pair of sunglasses that he took off while he said that. I and, and they'll get it. Sunglasses off. My undivided attention. That's right. Wow! Do you just imagine him always wearing sunglasses? Because I do. Why not? 24-7, man. Just... <laughs> And you know Luke's just sleeping through all this. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. He's he's just he's just force chilling. Nap. He's having a force nap. You know, he doesn't have his tunic on, his lightsabers, you know, across the room. Um, but basically, uh, he's going toward the front lines. Yeah. And uh, he said, you know, Mara, where do you want me? He said, go find Leia, go help her with the refugees. Yeah. And she's like, okay, I trust you. She's like trying to justify to us, like, listen, I trust you. We'll be fine. Yeah. Um, By the way, you get a little reference to him kind of missing his days in Rogue. And yeah, he's I a just, pilot, man. He, I just kind of miss that. It's like one of my notes is like, <sighs> Jedi Master Luke, Pilot Luke. Which one's more badass? Because he's amazing. And well, I'm, in I'm always going to say Jedi Master yeah. Luke, but I mean, but can cool Jedi way. Master Luke destroy a Death Star without his X Wing? Bet he could. Bet yeah. he could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did kill a god, so <laughs> well, that's very true. Okay, so let's uh, let's pump ahead a little bit here. Um, back in the battle, tough seven here. <laughs> tough seven. Sorry, that's a such tough a seven. A tough. Seven. That's su- that's such a lame name for for a squadron. <laughs> tough seven here. Tough six reporting in. Tough two standing by. Tough ten. Dead. Well, if there was like. 40 of them, too. Why not? Imagine get, that kind of call sign. Tough. Oh, my God. Shut up. We're all here. <laughs> Tough seven here. I could use some cover on my attack run. Uh, Janet clicked on her comm unit. Rogue 11 on you, T7. 
T Sev. It's T Sev. Yeah, that's right. So she's just like hits her know. vape. Yeah, T Sev got you. All right, let's do Shut this. You, stupid <laughs> vape. Oh, thanks, Sticks. DX. You're good, Sticks. You got your lightsaber in there, Sticks, or should I just call you Stick? Are you holding the stick with your lightsaber stick uh, while you got a another stick? Hey, does your does your RT have a stick? Can we call you Triple Sticks? <laughs> triple Stick. <laughs> Trip Stick. <laughs> Trip Stick. There that we go. That sounds like a name that they'd give one of the R2 units. They got catch. Why not trip stick? Yeah, there you go. So anyway, the Jedi pilot rolled her X-Wing up on the port stabilizer and came around on a heading that put her to starboard of the Exceptor, heading into in at the ground formation. The TIE Interceptor's wings on the Exceptor spat laser darts, spat them. He didn't flick them this time. He just spat them. Just spat Spat laser darts, laser darts, past its long X-wing nose. <laughs> well, I don't have that big a nose. <laughs> uh, scything down rows of Yuzenvong troopers. Though Jaina could not see much in the green light from lasers, she could make out that none of the Yuzenvong troopers broke or ran. They also seemed small to me, stockier than I thought the Yuzenvong were from what Jason had described. Of course, well, everything's pretty... Big to Jason. I mean, scary things. You know. Yeah. A coral skipper came around and vectored in on the Exceptor. Jana shoved her stick forward. <clears throat> <clears throat> forward and... The, the Which one? Man. The lightsaber? Oh, well, that's my wrong stick. She it just shoved her stick around and sprayed red laser splinters at the skip. He's really trying to be like super... Now, she's spraying them. He's spitting them. Somebody's flicking them. They're splinters. They're made they're, of wood because they're splinters. <laughs> you just need to stop. It immediately uh, spouted a void that sucked in most of the laser fire. Jaina kept her ship coming on hard and lo- <laughs> loose the solid. I can't. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Well, there's there's <laughs> sucking and it's hard and... No, say the whole thing. No. The Yuzen Vong pilot, to sh- he shied off. As he broke to her port, she rolled to port and leveled out T-Sev's aft. I don't like being shielding but I need to give him this shot. And the except took care of it. It's pretty cool. Mm. You know, even though it's some of the writing in this book here. is terrible, and some of this is even cringeworthy, all of the the dog fight He's pretty good at dog are usually fights. very well written. Yeah, that's why I kind of wanted to read through a little bit of this, because, yeah, he, he's he's done a good amount of justice to the to the actual dog fighting. But I'm going to pop around back here to, uh, to Leia's view. So Mara comes up to Leia, and they're it chilling. Scares the crap out of getting her. People, <laughs> getting people out. And then there's, um, there's a tent. Yeah. It's just this random tent. There's a tent out there, and Mara's like, there's something in that tent. Hey, you sense anybody in that tent? I don't. But look, there's something in that freaking there's, tent. Something's moving in that tent. It's not a dog. So There's something in that tent. It's not a dog. So I did like the fact that like they didn't just like slash the tent. She cuts the guy line of the tent, which is just an outrigger. And it's like I whatever. You could have killed them all. I'm getting it, I'm getting too picky. Whatever. No, honestly, that was just a very weird, awkward moment. Like yeah. they're just hiding in a tent. Well, really? Some of the the some of the 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 chatter here confused me a bit. I had to read it several times. Mara's head came up and she peered off past the edge of the fight, uh, the freighter. Something wrong? Nothing like that. Mar, nothing like that. It seemed like a really weird answer. Okay. Anyway, then in Clipter lightsaber and belt, you've got nothing at all, right? And then what? Yeah. So, I mean, I get what they're saying. Cause it's like, it first said, I don't know. I got a feeling blank, something wrong. Nothing like that. Nothing like what? A bad feeling. Yeah. You've got nothing at all, right? Which means nothing. They're not yeah, feeling anything right. okay. And then what? But nothing like that. Yeah. But what? Nothing. But nothing. Nothing like that. It just seemed like a weird sequence, but... Nothing like something. And then <laughs> Leia reached out with force. She could sense no life in it. That's impossible! <laughs> the life should be over 9,000. And then Mara... Darting forward, not quite. <laughs> Coincidentally, we didn't discuss this. Uh, I don't remember, but if it's been said before, 
Anakin has a violet lightsaber. Ooh, that was in my notes. I forgot about that. Yeah. Did, Did you we, know that? Because I didn't no, either. I don't, okay. I don't think yeah. I pointed it out. Yeah. So, and Mar has a blue lightsaber. Yeah. I, I just, I, I can't get past the fact that Annie's got a purple one. That's really cool Did to me. Did they like switch? Because Mar, I thought, pretty historically had a... Purple lightsaber. Yeah. yeah I kind of wondered about that too. Anyway. I've, I've seen quite a bit of pictures of her, and she's always been depicted with a purple lightsaber. So. Maybe we need to get better with our lore here. But anyway, so she slashed the guy lines holding the tent up. It collapsed over three figures for a second, and they clawed their way free of the red fabric. Fa- fa- fabric. The trio of Yuz and Vong warriors stood there for a moment, looking tall, but because of what they wore, hardly like lean figures others had described, uh, pale pseudo flesh covering covered them, save for the claws that uh, projected through it. And where it hung like a hood back off their heads, they also had pulled on clothes that their feet revealed by the shredded folds of the tent. Leia saw three naked bodies covered in blood. So basically, the Yuzen Vong have infiltrated the camp. They killed a few refugees and were attempting to Ugolith mascure themselves and take their clothes and infiltrate the rest of the is, people. Is that now a verb? Ugolith mascured? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So anyway, uh, uh, they don't really talk about the combat here yet. So basically, they're just they're, they see these guys and are like they're thinking about it. Oh my god, what if there are more? And then we end the chapter. <laughs> yeah, such a weird end to the chapter. The last few pages. So hey, look, anyway, hey, look, Mara Jade. Purple lightsaber, purple lightsaber, purple yeah, lightsaber, purple blue lightsaber, purple lightsaber, I, I, blue lightsaber. Oh no, okay, she has so she red has blue lightsaber, purple. purple well, obviously purple, she had red yeah. at, at a time. Purple, blue. Okay, I just never remember seeing much media with her having a blue lightsaber, but I could be. You I'm know, gonna I'm gonna Google Anakin well. now. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and pop into chapter twenty nine. We might have just read it wrong, and he grabbed her lightsaber for some reason. I don't know. I don't know. Chapter 29? Yep. The one that I didn't read. No, you're getting you're getting getting out of control over here. So we're back with Corn. Corn um, horn. They're essentially going off to um to try and save the scientists that were captured. They set off a probe to draw out the Yuzen Long Warriors while uh Corn and Ganner go in to the uh the snail shell out there. <laughs> the snail shell. <laughs> the conch shell. <laughs> to try the piece of coral to try and uh, save them. Uh, once they get in there, I did think this was kind of weird. Um, let me let me just search this right here. So both men had been stripped of their clothing. Little maggot white crab-like creatures the size of a sabak deck walked across their backs pinching them with their little claws or digging needle-like appendages into their flesh. So they're being tortured. They're on this like rack thing that's holding them in there. And then they have these little crab people. Crab people. Yeah, smaller than that. Cause they're only the size of a sabak deck pinching them to death. <laughs> so it's just so flipping weird. Um, so they attempt to, Free them. What am I looking at? Uh, Shia LaBeouf with a... But look at the title. Uh, I, that's probably some fan freaking out. It's nothing. Okay. Don't worry about it. But uh, Annie has a purple one, too. Okay. Yeah, I just don't... I don't think they've said that yet. They haven't. I know they haven't. Well, anyway, so there we go. Purple lightsaber for... Violet. Violet yeah. lightsaber. That's what he said in the book. Violet. But there can only be one at any given time. Yeah, get out of here. So anyway... And uh, here comes Mace Windu. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's long dead at this point. Is he? Long dead. Is he? Long dead. Or is he? <laughs> <laughs> well, that went off. Or whole... is he Snoke? Yeah, that went <laughs> off there. So basically, Corn uh, and Gann are trying to get him off this rack, but... What they notice is that the rack is basically keeping them in a constant state of pain. 
So they do figure out that in order to be able to get them off, if they overload them with pain, then the rack will let them go. Because it's not trying to kill them. It's just trying to make them really inconveniently, like, hurt. This is annoying. So... That's good. Right there. Yeah. Just keep them right there, rack. Yeah. So basically, what they devise is corn, who's obviously good at projecting visions on people. Yeah. Says, well, you know what? I have a pretty cool rare power that, you know, I can absorb a lot of pain, man. I mean, it's pretty rare and all, but, you know, I can do it. So basically, what what Corn is going to do is show off how much better he is in the game. And project, much. Yeah, project pain into the two scientists so that the racks will let them go and they can cut them loose. But in order to do this, he has to actually experience pain. Because as he says, you know... Have you ever broken a bone? Well, yeah. Do you remember the the pain, like the the searing pain? And we don't really. When you think right. about it, you know we've all gotten hurt. You can just remember it's unpleasant. You yeah. can't describe but it, but you really. can't you can't sit there and just forcefully remember that pain. It's something right. that your body walked out. Yeah. Or you know, like he says, women wouldn't keep having kids if they just remembered all the pain. Or they would. I don't know. Some people are sadists. But anyway, so he says, okay, well, what you're going to have to do is hold your lightsaber up to my forearm and just kind of you know, touch it a little bit. Just, just a little touchy touch. And then he'll do his thing. So he does, and they kind of, uh, skin crackling. and blah, uh. So he projects all this. They are able to get the scientists out of the racks. But as they're getting ready to drag them off, our good buddies, the Yuzen Vong, show up. And they're like, hey. Why are you in my house? Those are mine. My well, humans. Well, this isn't really a house. It's kind of more of a shell. <laughs> it's my shell. It's house. my shell. It's our shell. Get out of here. It's just us. Took a long. Do you realize how long it took to kill the thing that was in and pull it out and clean out all the slime? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that was. Uh, that's where we leave it off. So is this mystical power going to be used to actually fight the using ball? I don't know. But he's in a lot of pain right now, yeah. and he can't block it out either. So this is going to be tough, but yeah. we'll see how they fare. And of course, they pick you know, probably the side that he holds the lightsaber, I'm sure. Cause that's a good question. I don't know if they really did. That'd be stupid, though. But that's the whole point. They probably would because. Eh, maybe. 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 Artificial danger. Maybe. Wouldn't you, just if you were in the Star Wars universe, just like carry little back to bandages with you at all the time. They well, never seem to do that, do they? You remember how like you know, I mentioned it earlier and like Revenge of the Sith, the video game, every character you played as could just heal themselves with yeah. the force. Why can't a Jedi do that? <laughs> well, they kind of do, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. Just so like the, oh. there was also the part in the Jedi Fallen Order, mm-hmm. the healing where he's like, hey, help me out. And the little droid pops up a little healing thing, and he, like, takes it. Oh, really? I didn't that was that part. Cool. Anyway, so at the drugs. end of the episode... Drugs. Drugs, drugs bad. Drugs. drugs bad. Don't how, take drugs. How many of those things can it hold? Mm-hmm. Can know. you upgrade it? And as you upgrade, its capacity just gets fatter and fatter. <laughs> Who knows? So anyway, that was our reread. I went through quite a few chapters there, a lot of information. Um, so we're getting into the battle. We're battling the Vong again, man, and uh, a lot of side quests, little side stories, but they're all coming together. Dan Tween's on fire, and we're going to see how, how our heroes fare. So do we have seven or eight chapters? You want to count that? Shut your mouth. <laughs> we have one more episode in book two. And, and now, and this is when you never heard of Darth Austin again, <laughs> as he just goes away. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, big milestone coming up for us. Yeah, pretty close to episode 50. Yeah, we're averaging around 25 episodes a book, I guess, at this point, which we won't be for long, but we are yeah. about to hit 50 at the same time we'll be finishing this book. Pretty cool. Yeah, that, right right there, but I was actually going to try and figure out our official tally. I want to say 47 or 48, this will be, dang it, that's not where I need to go. Okay, so this is actually going to be episode 49 that we're recording here. Cool. Perfect timing. So, yep, it's it's coming down to the wire uh, for this book, and obviously been doing this for almost a year now. We have. It's actually coming up pretty soon. 
But anyway, folks, uh, so we've, missed, we've missed two weeks. That's not bad. That's yeah. not too bad. Not too bad. Anything else you want to mention before we head out? Uh, we're getting very close to our review of Master and Apprentice. Master and Apprentice, yep. Very I close. about three hours left of that. Excellent. I just need to take a nice long trip somewhere so I can focus <laughs> and listen to it. It's about the only time I can listen to Audible. I can't just pop it in and do it at work. So, yeah, we're getting pretty close, and we'll have a review of that. Excited yep. to talk about it. Yep, should be very cool. So anyway, folks, we greatly appreciate you stopping by. And uh, yeah, we will catch you next week. And as always, may the force be with you.